morning. Welcome to our chapel service for May 17th, 2020, here at Warm Beach Senior Community. Please join us in singing some old favorite hymns. First, praise to the Lord the Almighty. fortress is our God.
Isn't that absolutely triumphant? You know, I was thinking as we were singing that, that there must have been many times in which the church internationally, the body of Christ, has actually sung those words in the middle of difficulty, immense difficulty, knowing that actually the outcome was in God's hands. And I, it made me feel very strongly about that incredible scripture about anxiety. I think if you haven't been a bit anxious recently, um, then I'm not sure you're alive. <laughs> it seems that most people have. I got back just the, a few um, hours ago now from being out there um, at, at a clinic, a medical clinic, and also in the supermarket. Um, the lady who shops for me is actually sick. It looks like she has actually caught the virus. <sighs> and so anxiety seems reasonable, and yet here is Philippians in the fourth chapter. And if you haven't made a note of this one, write it down. Philippians 4, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Make your request known to God, and he will give you a peace that will pass by your understanding and will keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And uh, so when I was walking around and seeing everybody with masks on, I have mine, by the way, it matches my shirt. Um, and I, I watched them, and I started to think, I'm not anxious, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the fact that people are wearing masks. They're not, they don't want to breathe on me. And God is allowing this to be an international example of our love for others. Wow, isn't that amazing? Let's pray together, shall we? Lord, we want to thank you for the great hymns which resound through the ages and which must have been sung during the Blitz of London in those days, and elsewhere around the world when great tragedy abounds. You restlessly look over the whole earth for a righteous man and woman in whom you can be strong. And we are just simply saying we... We're not sure whether we can acclaim, claim that word righteous, but we do trust you. We do come with this absolute trust. It's in your hands, and it is going to go away. And as it goes away, and even during it, your presence in our lives gives well to us, yelling out our thanks to you, O oh God. We give you thanks. Please Join us, Lord Jesus, in this place at this time for the words that we will share between us this day. We welcome you in our midst. Amen. So the announcements this time you can read as well as I can, and the link is a wonderful thing to read this week. Um, the announcements are that the Eagle's Nest is open for business and has been doing this now. It's amazing. You can, by 10.30 in the morning, you can put your order in. It's going to take about half an hour to 40 minutes. It depends how, what the loading is at the time for the kitchen's point of view. So you have a, a chance to be able to stand six feet away from someone you really love and have a, a nice conversation. <laughs> I think it is, I've, I've felt the other day, I'm distanced by six feet from all of you. But I am so close to all of you, there is a spiritual distance and a physical distance. And, and spiritually, I think we're closer together than we ever have. So even though if you have to stand apart, just know I feel cozy when I'm in your company. <laughs> Um, you can keep on ordering, by the way, until 5.30. That's the last time for delivery. You can pick up a menu um, just outside Beechwood here uh, to let you know what that is. And no cash at the moment, credit cards, or it can go on your account. Um, that's how that works. Also, a thrift store reminder. There may be some things that you want to get rid of during this season of spring cleaning. 
and sorting things out. What a good thing to do, to nip over to the thrift store and dump it there. You may notice that the thrift store is closed and if you dump it, it's out in the open air and it's very unsightly and doesn't work. So please, will you just wait for those um, thrift store donations until it's a proper time. I would love you also to be able to pay some attention to Bud McDowell's piece that he's written in the link. It's triumphant and wonderful to be able to read. Bud is an enthusiast, we all know that, and he, he outdoes himself in this piece, as he rightly should. And then, finally, the dots on my tie uh, represent the little white pins which are being driven into the big board, and we're getting more and more as every week goes by. You know that old advertising idea, keep, keep selling, keep announcing the fact that you have something. Eventually, somebody who has said, oh, I must do that, actually does it. So please, do pick up the little sheet of paper, which is, again, outside Beechwood, and this is what you will pick up, and it'll show you all the nations and the states of the world today that are being prayed for now by us. It's a whole, it's a whole rocket display of prayer going up daily for the nations of the world. We know the nations of the world are suffering, and we know that our God listens to our prayers. What a wonderful opportunity it is for us to gather together and to actually be responsible for a place on the planet. Put the little white pin in your name into the chart, and off we go. Oh, I'm so excited by the fact that we do this. So that is the announcements for today. And now, my wonderful opportunity. I would like to leap up and put my arm around Nikki, but I can't. So, Nikki, I have my, <laughs> my arm around you now, dear. And I can just imagine it's so hard to look into a little camera, but I'm going to nip over here and be part of the audience, and you have an audience who loves you. We remember the last time that you were with us and how you blessed us. And we love the fact that you're continuing during this time to do those studies which will advance you to the place when you can have your heart's desire in the Lord to be a pastor of, a, of, a, of a, a congregation who will be filled and waiting for you to bless them. Those are the days to come. But right now, we ask your, the Lord's blessing upon you as you come and share the word with us. Nikki. Thank you, Graham. Good morning, friends. Oh, I am so grateful to be here with you this morning to share the word of God with you. And as I stand here, I'm reminded of Paul's letter to the Philippians, which he says, For God is my witness, how I long for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. I hear the warmth and compassion in Paul's voice as he speaks of these dear friends that he's come to know and love and misses when he's gone, when he's away from them. And I feel that way about all of you when I'm away from this place. I've come to know many of you through my years next door at the Warm Beach Camp. And I think of you as family. When I go for a long time without seeing you, I miss you. I feel the love and community in this place, and it just warms my heart. Now, we're in the middle of a time that is challenging us in a way we've never experienced before. A time that makes us feel isolated and alone with no power of our own to come out of it. That has led many of us to become discouraged and heavy in our spirits. I want to speak hope and purpose to you today, my friends. Many of us have been seeing this time through a lens of struggle and isolation. But today, I want to show you this time through a lens of power and promise. At the Easter service a few weeks ago, my husband Scott gave a wonderful message about looking through the right end of the telescope about viewing our circumstances through the lens of who God is 
instead of the other way around. But to do that, we need to know who God is. One thing we know about God from Scripture is that he is a God of comfort and mercy. 2 Corinthians 1.3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. We also know that God is a shield in times of trouble, and he loves to bless us. Psalm 84.11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. So what do we know about the sun? Well, it's warm and life-giving. We need it to survive. It's also full of energy, and it's a source of power. The sun gives abundant light, even from 93 million miles away. Yes, that is how far the sun is away from Earth. When it goes away for any length of time, we miss it. And we're filled with joy when it comes back. When we go for a long period of time without seeing the sun, we can be overtaken by depression. There's just so much that we can meditate on when we think of God as our sun. Now we're getting to the time of year where the sun is out more, yay, and the heat from the sun is more intense. So I'd like to encourage you as you go through the day and you see the sun coming in through your window or you spend time out in the sunshine to feel the warmth of the rays on your face and think about the attributes of the God who created you. According to this verse, God is also a shield. God pr protects us from harm. Here's the thing about a shield is it only helps you when you hold on to it and place it in front of you. As our shield, God is impenetrable and nothing can get past him. You have no need to fear when you have a shield like this in front of you. There is nothing that the enemy can do against a shield like this. This is why he works so hard to get you to put it down or to forget that you even have it. Another thing we know about God from Scripture is that we can find refuge in Him. Psalm 91.4 says, He will cover you with His pinions, and under His wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a bulwark. What a beautiful and comforting picture that is. Have you ever seen a bird spread its wings over its chicks and cover them to keep them safe, gather them in close and cover them? This, this is how our loving Father is described in this verse. You really can't, you really can't paint a better picture of God as our loving and nurturing protector. That this earth, Verse also says that God's faithfulness is a shield and a bulwark. A bulwark is a wall built for protection and defense. We already talked about God as a shield, so now let's look at God as a bulwark, our strong wall of defense. To get to us, first the enemy has to get past the wall. Now he can easily get past a wall that's built through human strength, but nothing Nothing can penetrate God's protection. Our God is an immovable, unbreakable, unscalable wall that stands between us and the enemy. When we stand behind him, we are safe. We have no need to cower in fear. And instead, we can stand and fight Now in the next two verses, Psalm, in Psalm 91, it goes on to say, you will not be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flies by day or of the pestilence that stalks in the darkness or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. 
When fears like this threaten to overtake you, remember, remember that your heavenly father longs to spread his wings over you and keep you safe. He is a loving father and he is your protector. Okay, so now that we're looking at the truth of who our father is, let us peer through that truth at the situation around us. Now, the world around us is engulfed in a war with a deadly disease, and it's causing us to be isolated from each other. We are struggling and afraid and feeling very discouraged. If we look, through, if we look at God through the lens of this situation, we're going to remain discouraged and fearful. But if we remember that God is our shield and our wall of protection and that he tenderly cares for us and shelters us under his wings, we can find comfort that strengthens us in the core of our being. This is where we need to spend time. This is where we need to dwell. Spend time thinking about who God is as your loving father. As a sun that shines down on you with warmth and tenderness. And as a shield and a strong wall of defense to protect you from harm. In your loneliness, seek out his presence and find comfort under his wings. From this place of being filled with comfort and peace that our Father lavishes on us. Let us now turn and look at the situation we're in again. In James 1, 2 through 3, it says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Okay, now let's be honest. Sometimes we don't like this verse, do we? Seriously, we don't. You know, I always used to look at it as saying that the more you get beat up, the more you'll get used to it, the less you'll feel it, and then the more you can take next time before you buckle under the weight of it. That's always how I used to read the verse. But that's not, that, that's an attitude of survival. That's not an attitude of hope. Let's keep reading. In verse 4, it goes on to say, And let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So if we stop at verse 3, we get the idea that the testing of your faith means that God is testing you to see how much suffering you can take and still believe in him. That's not what testing means here. Let's go to the Amplified Version to get a better picture. So starting in verse 3, it says, Be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your, of your faith bring out endurance and steadfastness and patience. But let endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work so that you may be people perfectly and fully developed with no defects, lacking in nothing. This is talking about purification not proving your sincerity to God. Think of it as refining gold through the fire. The intensity of the heat melts the gold and its impurities become separated from it and then they can be removed. When we're in the middle of a trial, we need to see it for the opportunity that it is. If we let it, it can be a refining fire that God uses to take away all the things in our minds and in our hearts and in our souls that dilute his power and presence in us. The more we lean into him, the more we can experience the truth of who he is in a way we never knew before. He will become more real to us and we will become closer to him in spirit we will be able to hear his voice clearly and we will be able to discern his will. We will also experience more of his power. I'm reminded of something I read during my devotional time a couple of days ago. 
It was written by Chuck D. Pierce in the book, How to Minister Freedom. He said, the human spirit testifies to the power of God. When we go through a trial and come out victorious, God proves himself to us. This proof of God is then recorded in the memory of our spirit. When we again come in contact with a situation that we know is contrary to God's ability, we can recall what God did in the past and speak that testimony forth. We can say with confidence, God has a way. So right now we're in a season of trial. We have an opportunity to grow in faith and endurance and to use the incredible power of the Holy Spirit to defeat the enemy. When we go through an extreme trial like this, like the one we're facing now, we have the opportunity. <clears throat> we have the opportunity to experience the power of God that goes beyond anything we've known, anything we've experienced before. We can know God in a new and deeper way. We can walk in the light of this new knowledge of him, and this light can drive out any darkness that we face. The darkness begins to lose its power over us. Isn't that something to be joyful for? Now, there's something that I want to tell you about who you are because I think you desperately need to hear it. And when I say you, I'm not talking about believers in general. I'm talking about you, the residents of the Warren Beach Senior Community here in this place. This place is full of the Spirit of God. Many of you have spent a lifetime as pastors, as teachers, as missionaries and servants. You have walked with the Lord through many trials, through many difficult seasons. You've known him in all kinds of circumstances. And this is a place of prayer. I feel it. I feel it when I come onto the grounds and when I come into this building. Do you want to know why I enjoy coming here so much? It's because I feel the love of God in this place. When I came here back in February to share a Sunday message with you for the first time, I was surrounded by people who warmly greeted me when I walked through the door. And they said that they had been earnestly praying for me. I was undone. I know that the prayers that you pray together in this place can move mountains. And you've been praying for me. The enemy might be telling you that it's your time to step aside and to let the next generation lead. That you have nothing worthwhile to give anymore and that your most productive years are behind you. That is a lie and do not believe it. Believe me when I say to you that you believers in this place are some of the most powerful people on the planet. You are the prayer warriors and you have power beyond what you can comprehend. The prayers pray prayed in this place can change the world. I firmly believe that. The world needs you. This season of struggle for so many of us is an opportunity for God to move in ways that we've never experienced before. We've never seen before. We need to be praying that the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit to be released into this situation and into the lives of the people who need to know God like you know God. Right now we're feeling isolated. We're hurting and our spirits are crying out in loneliness. God himself will step into these moments. He will step into these moments with you and answer that cry personally if you let him. You have the opportunity right now to know the God of the universe in a deeply personal way. In your spirit that will sustain you through whatever trials come your way from this day forward. Believe this 
friends, and let this power fuel your prayers. Now, some of you might be saying in your hearts, I've never known God in this way. I want to know God like this. You can start right now. Pray this prayer with me and know, know that the mighty prayer warriors in this place are praying with you now to know the presence and the power of the one true God. Pray with me now. Lord Jesus, I come to you as a stranger, but I want to know you as a friend. I come as a sinner, but I want to be one of your saints. I confess to you and admit to myself that on my own, I will never get past my sins and my weaknesses. When you gave your life away on the cross, you did it for me, that I could know forgiveness and be cleansed from all my sin, that I could have a strength that was never available to me before. I want to begin my life again as a child of the living God. I want to know you in a special way from this day forward and for the rest of my life. Amen. Now, I want to encourage you all to be thinking ahead to the day that we can all gather together again and celebrate all that the Lord has done during this time. In the meantime, keep praying earnestly and look for the opportunities that the Lord's putting on your heart to help people during this time in a special way. <laughs> this might be a time of social distancing, but it is not a time of spiritual distancing. Far from it. God is not hindered at all by us staying at home or staying six feet apart. Not at all. So if you don't do it already, this would be a great time to begin keeping a prayer journal. Record the situations that the Lord is leading you to pray for, the people he's leading you to pray for. Pour out your heart on the pages of your prayer journal. And be sure to record or highlight all of the answered prayers, all of the ways God has answered prayer through your faithfulness. This will be a wonderful testimony that you can share with others, that we can share together. So, so let us encourage each other with praises to God for his answer to our prayers. I want to leave you with this verse to meditate on as we close our time together. This is from Psalm 27, 13 through 14. I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, oh, we come to you with grateful hearts, knowing that you are our Heavenly Father, our God who loves us dearly, that you are personal and knowable, and that you're with us right now, right now with us, so close, closer than our next breath, and that we can know you and know this closeness with you in a special way as we head into difficult situations, as we go through this time that seems to be stretching on into forever. Lord, this isn't a time to be discouraged or depressed. This is a wonderful opportunity to come to know you in a new and deeper way to have you bring to the surface all of those impurities in us that are getting in the way of our relationship with you and to take them away, that we will not be hindered by them anymore. So we give you praise and we thank you, Lord God, and we ask you to bless us as we go on into our week. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank you.
I once in our family had a puppy. It was a lab and it was chocolate covered. Um, and it would want to run after a stick. And um, immediately you held this stick, it would go <laughs> and the tongue would kind of hang out and it, and it quivered at the idea of running for the stick. You threw it, it tore through the air, grabbed the stick, brought it back, dropped it at, 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 at my feet if I'd thrown it, and then was, <laughs> do it again. I just saw that in Nicky. I don't know if you did as well, but this is earnestness. There's eagerness in a puppy, but there's earnestness in the spirit. And if we understand this God who loves us to the degree that Nikki has just described to us, then we know there is nothing that that God does not want more than for us to have eternal life in him, which is exactly what she's praying. That's the most important thing in our God's heart. That's his comfort. That's our security. And so we come to an offering. How then should I look at the offering? I look at it like, like a stick. <laughs> Let me give again. <laughs> really? I, it is a joy in giving away something that I'm a little bit concerned about. Like many of you may have seen some of your IRA or whatever it is melting away before your eyes. You may even listen to the God Tao who proclaims himself every day and wonder about that. But the greatness of our God is, say, see my love spilled out over the whole earth. And it, it is facilitated in doing that by you giving out of your love at this time. That, that's it. So, Lord, God Almighty, thank you. You're a shield, but you're also an offering plate. And we see this polished offering plate come past us like a shield. It is, in fact, a shield in your hands when we place this offering before you. We utterly trust you in the disposition of these funds so that it meets the needs which are profound at this very moment. Thank you for helping us to give out of our need so that there would be equality in our world and you would be glorified. Thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.